Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Dead Space. This is episode 2, and I am Shadefire as always. Last episode, we arrived aboard the USG Ishimura to discover that some bad shit had gone down previously before our arrival. Now, we are trying to get the tram back online so we can access other areas of the ship and hopefully find some survivors, or at least find out what happened aboard the ship. But to do that... Oh, jeez, I almost went the wrong... Wait. Yes, okay, I am going the wrong way. To do that, we're going to need to find the circuit board for the uh, tram control computer. Isaac, it's Kendra. It looks like the door to the storage room is locked. There should be a key somewhere in the maintenance bay. Now this room has a lot of necromorphs in it. So I may or may not get surprise attacked if I forget where one of them is. There's one right there. There's another one over there. Moment to come around the bend. Now a few more should be appearing. Any moment. Probably one through that. Time. I think that was a good time. Let's see if we can use this explosive barrel. Too slow. Okay. I think that's all of them. Until we get a bit farther in. Money's always nice. Even though we've yet to find the use for it. Oh, here comes another one. This is why you can see, or you can see here, that slashers aren't very dangerous if they don't get close to you. I.e. if they spawn far away from you. Because then you can just gun them down at a distance. Still here another one. Oh, there. They're not very good at sneaking up on you either because they make that kind of choking noise when they uh, are just wandering around and don't have eyes on you. Emergency supplies. I kind of want to leave an empty spot in our inventory because we want to have at least two piles of plasma energy and plasma energy maxes out at piles of 25, so I'm just going to use that up. Right now, ammo is more valuable than health because we're not going to be taking too much damage. Now, we could go through here, but we need a key. A key means we're going to have to go upstairs. Not even sure what that thing is. Some sort of capacitor or fluctuator or something. Something sci fi. Some propaganda for the. Gordon's Extraction Corporation. For some reason I find that name very difficult to actually remember. Because it doesn't really mean anything. Other than that they're a mining company. Hello, frame rate. More money. No problems. Sometimes slashers will also be just like that, uh, mixed in with corpses, so you don't know that they're there. Plasma energy. This is a static free work area. You now that weird little image there is just because of the uh, magnetized boots, like the ones we're wearing. Which is why we can do such a <laughs> glorious stomp. Ah. Oh, turn away, oh god! We almost got surprised back there. I was 
so distracted by this flaily guy who just wants to wave us goodbye. How much ammo do we have left? Okay, we're doing pretty good on ammo. As long as you've got one full clip in your inventory. Now we can go back to this locked door. Which is over here, not over there. Grab ourselves another power node. And a medium med kit, which is worth dropping a small one for. And now we can finally use our power nodes using this bench here. Yes, thank you. So yeah, we can upgrade any of our weapons to make them more damaging, more... Uh, have higher capacity, faster reload speed, or just firing speed. And then the rig is your health and your hit, your air when you're in zero uh, G environments, or zero oxygen, I guess. Vacuum, that's the fancy science word. So we're going to upgrade our plasma cutter to do more damage, higher capacity. Now you can see each one of these grid pieces uses one power node to activate. And you can only activate ones adjacent to ones that have already been activated. So if we wanted to get this reload one, we'd have to activate this blank one first and waste a power node on that. But it's worth it because um, if you keep upgrading the plasma cutter, it'll be useful for the entire game. And also the stasis module, though I never bother upgrading that. I find that the weapon upgrades are a lot more useful than being able to freeze enemies. Get the circuit board. That's it, Isaac. Take the board back to tram control and plot it into the computer array. That should get the tram system back online. Where's that guy going? Oh, I know where he's going. He's either going to go around and try to surprise us or go back into the vent and come out beside us. Oh, no, he's coming back around. Now oh, we killed him with body shots that time. So you can actually kill Necromorphs if you hit him in the body, it just takes a lot longer. I forgot to mention that earlier when I incorrectly said that you can only kill them by shooting their limbs off. Unfortunately, while this game can be scary, it sometimes is a little obvious with its scares. Like these, uh, playing dead necromorphs. Because you can usually tell when they're going to get up or not, just by looking at them. So now that we've got the circuit board, we can get the tram online, and we can travel on to the next area, and the next chapter. The game is broken up into 12 chapters, and each one represents a different area of the ship. Now, there are some areas where you're going to need to travel back to, but not very many. Usually, it's just progressing on to the next area after doing the required maintenance in an area. Because that's really what we're here for. And as an engineer, it seems only right to fix the ship as we travel through it. Alright, so now we can slot in the circuit board over here. Tram control computer now online. And get the trams running again so that our two companions ship can travel. Shipwide tram travel. system reinitialized. All trams now operational. Tram arriving at flight deck station. Quarantine lifted. Alright, we're on board and heading to the bridge. Good work. Strange. The quarantine just lifted. Whatever was in the flight lounge must have left. That's lucky for us. Isaac, get back to the Kellyon and prep it for launch. We'll find out what we can from the bridge and meet you there. If we live that long... You're out of your league, Hammond. This is suicide. We're going your to die out here. Your confidence in me is really noted, Miss Daniels. 
But I have a mission to complete, and that's exactly what I am going to do, with or without you. Do we understand each other? Just get us out of here alive. I mean, the game's already begun, and Kendra is already established herself as the annoying horror movie character that's constantly shitting on everybody else's plans and saying, Oh, no, we're all gonna die if we do this. As though the alternative would be to just not die and do nothing. She's not gonna get much better for the rest of the game. I say, Necromorph's on the horizon. Come out, little boy. I don't really know what the purpose of this Necromorph is, because he just kind of stops at this point. He literally just climbed in the vent and went to the next one so that he could try to sneak up on it, but then came back, defeating the purpose of his whole sneaky plan. But yeah, usually he stops at that corner and then I shoot him before he can get away. Yeah, he came through the ceiling. Pretty much all vents in this game you have to avoid or train your gun on when you go past them because a necromorph will more likely than not jump out of it. Isaac, we made it to the bridge. It's a nightmare up here. No survivors. We're going to try to get to the command computer. Wish us luck. See, we're back here in the uh, lounge where we arrived. Since we have to go check on the Kellyan. However, there's a lot. Leaper around here wants to stop us. Unfortunately for him, he's not much of a threat. The ship's really not looking too great. That's another uh, simula similarity. similarity with Event Horizon. Shortly after arriving on the ship, our ship is horribly damaged, forcing us to stay on the ship we've arrived at. One thing I want to point out before we uh, continue here is the Kellyan looks like a very uncomfortable ship to travel long distances. There's a table here, there's an empty hallway here, and then there's another table here, and that's the whole ship. So you're, you have your choices of place to sit, and that's about it. Nothing to do, no computers other than the flight computer, and that's a, all there is. But I guess it's a maintenance ship, so they don't use it for long distance travel. Alright, so let's load up the damage report here. You know, that seems like a bit of a design flaw for the damage report to destroy the entire ship when loaded up. Killed him faster, but I probably should have. What the hell is happening down there? Yeah, what happened to the shuttle? For Those are at home. It's the only way off the ship. Kendra. No, Hammond! This changes everything! Just let me think. Can you access the command computer? It's no good. There's an executive lockdown of all primary systems. Without the captain's authorization, I can't access them. Well, where's the captain? Here he is. Captain Benjamin Mathias. Location? Med lab. Status? Deceased. What? How? I can't access that information. Find the captain and you'll find his rig. With his authorization codes, I can crack this computer wide open. Damn it. Isaac, I'm sending the tram back to your location. Get to the medical deck and find that rig as fast as you can. What was that? Good 
good to see we're not the only ones in this shit. Save yourself. Where is everybody? Can you hear the weird noise? Shut the fuck up. More proof that in an emergency situation, uh, writing on walls pretty much just becomes internet forums. What did that say? Something you. I am watching you? Is that what that says? It's really hard to read blood. Blood is not the best writing material. So we're going to grab this large med kit because why not? And because it's more valuable than a small one in actual commodity caches. Space caches. Ammo is always better. Get out of the way, med kid. I need to pick up this ammo. Right, come on. God damn it. This can be a little annoying sometimes. I drop it far enough away that it'll switch to the other thing. Alright. I don't even think that texture is high res enough for us to read it. Okay, so now that we've shut up. I really wish I could turn those off. Anyway, we've arrived at the tram station, which is the end of chapter one and the end of this uh, episode. But first, there's a couple things I want to do. Uh, we don't have any power nodes, so we need to go to the bench. This is the store, which, as the tooltip explained, is where you obviously buy and sell stuff. You can also use it as a storage kit, though, which makes it more functional than the merchant in Resident Evil 4. We're going to sell this large med kit because we actually don't have enough health to make full use of it right now. And we're going to store one of our small or medium med packs because we don't really need them yet. Now, we have the option of buying two new weapons, the line gun and the pulse rifle. Now we have enough to afford both of them, so we're going to do that. But first, we're going to upgrade to a level 2 suit. And as you can see at the top, suits give you higher defense rating against all attacks, and they also let you carry more shit at once. So we're definitely going to buy that first. You usually want to go for these before anything else. Right now we can buy this directly, but later on we're going to need to actually find schematics to upload to the store to uh, upgrade to higher levels. Isaac just climbs into this store machine with its space photocopier fax machine technology. And just like that, we've scanned our new suit, which you can see even has more armor visually, as well as having a higher armor percentage. Grab the line gun. Actually, maybe we don't have enough for both guns. Well, we're definitely gonna get the line gun first because it's the more useful of the two. Now it's gonna tell us that. Red weapon icons. Yeah. Your weapon has no ammo in its clip. I don't really know what that has to do with switching weapons. That just seems like a random thing. Like, oh wait, forgot to tell you this. Anyway. The line gun is essentially a larger and more powerful version of the plasma gun or plasma cutter. It shoots a big, wide, uh, heavy, damaging beam instead of just a little one, but you can't turn it vertical. So it's less versatile. It also shoots timed mines for some reason. I'm not quite sure what the tool explanation for that is, other than, hey, sometimes you need to blow shit up. Now we can travel to the next area of the ship, the med bay. Uh, 
And well, we're gonna end the episode here. I'm Shadefire, and thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time in episode 3 of Let's Play Dead Space.